All right, so we're here at the LC video shoot for Kobe. Yeah. Yeah, man. So uh, tell me about the Kobe, man. Like, what's the inspiration? We all know that Kobe, you know, is a beast on the on the on the ball court. But what what made you want to make a song? Um, I think honestly, it was two things. Um, I kind of just grew up. I grew up playing basketball, so mm -hmm. I was a fan of watching it. And Lakers was always like the dream team for me, right? Okay. Um, Kobe was my go-to player whenever I played any video games too. Okay. Um, and I think. Uh, Oh yeah, the other thing, the beat was called Kobe. Uh, the beat was called Kobe. Okay, okay. <laughs> and it, it kind of like, as the beat was playing, I was like, I, I it just inspired me to kind of just go in that direction. I felt the same energy that the producer felt. Okay. And it was, uh, I think, Taz Taylor that made that one. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, no, it's Taylor King. Ooh, Taylor King. I'm one of those guys, man. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> he should have gave me the beat. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so um, you've been rapping for a long time now, man. So you yeah. on YouTube, you can see your videos from like four years ago. Yeah, so tell yeah. Tell me about your progression and how you got to this point now and the music that you're making now compared to the music you're making before. Um, My music's all based on, on, on real life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's based on what I go through. Um, and I use music to vent, right? So a lot of the music that I make is is catered to my emotions. Okay. And And right now I'm just in a different place where... I understand how serious I want to take this. Mm. I understand where I'm trying to go with it, and and what it. I feel like I understand for the most part what it takes to get to the next level instead of just being a local artist. Okay. So that that that's like the progression I think that you'll notice in my music is that you'll hear like a more humble version of me, I guess, in mm -hmm. a sense, mm -hmm. where I was aware that I was pretty talented, yeah. but I was still insecure in a sense. I didn't know if this is really something I could do, mm. and now I'm in a place where I feel like. Like, it's just a matter of time about the right people hearing me and, exactly. and the right opportunities and the right people to meet. Look, I wasn't trying to put you second shit, but second guess is shit. But I'm sure the perception is that you were the next person. In terms of the Toronto scene, what do you think about like the music that's coming out of the city right now and the wave that, that's happening in the city? I, I have mixed emotions, but I am happy about uh just the city getting a lot of attention, a lot of love and... And the artists that are are getting clout, it's dope just to see that that's happening in the city, mm -hmm. and that Toronto's learning how to support itself. Because okay. anywhere you travel in the states, you'll notice that. Yeah. Where you'll go to a local show, and people that don't know that artist are going in. Yeah. And now they now they know that artist, exactly. right? Yeah. Over here, it's slowly like transitioning into that. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of the artists that have clout that are in Toronto are performing out of Toronto. Yeah. To to like do better shows. Exactly. That's how crazy it is, right? Like. I think uh, K Money went to Ottawa. Ottawa, yeah. Um, yeah, like Ottawa, Montreal. Yeah. Like these are places that artists are going because the Toronto scene isn't necessarily there. Especially the biggest problem is that the venues in Toronto still have an issue with the urban scene. Exactly. They're either afraid or they just don't want to really like support it in that that capacity. So, mm. I'm, so what artists are you checking for in the city right now? Like who, who who's on your who's on your radar that you're looking at? Honestly, I have a team of artists that I work with. Okay. So. Man Like Grease, Jamal Banks, okay. A Mill, okay. Puke Gang, uh, Peso, Jay Castles. I, I feel like Caesar, you know, Holly, YV. We, we have a deep team of talented artists that basically we're all basically learning together and we're learning how to work together okay. so we can make our goals and our dreams come true because that's the biggest thing that a lot of us in Toronto still struggle with is that screw face mentality and not supporting each other, right? Um, outside of our camp though, uh, I like, I mess with uh, Stay Out Late. Okay. Darren Philanna's dope. Um, I don't know, there's a lot of dope artists coming up. I'm not really into the street scene that much, I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Uh, I respect that they're real dudes that really did like some things and they talk about that in their music and that's dope. Mm. Um, Biz Loke is somebody I check. Yeah, big up Biz Loke. Yeah. I'm that nigga. That you hear, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, He's yeah. probably my favorite personality in Toronto right now, I think. Like, for, for the music industry, he has a lot of energy and... And he's consistent with it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like like designer, how he has that consistent energy exactly. no matter what. Exactly. So, yeah. Okay, okay. And the last question. Kobe question. Going back to Kobe now. Eight or 24? Mm. Eight. Eight. Okay, why? The Adidas Double. era. Okay. I think, I think he was just... Uh, he was more ruthless, mm -hmm. and he was and he was healthier, right? Yeah. At at twenty four, he was 
he was still good for the first little bit, mm -hmm. but I feel like eight was definitely his prime, and it just showcased everything that he was capable of doing. Facts. Yeah, Facts. man. All right, man. Cool. We're going to wrap it up, man. This is We Love Hip Hop. I'm AJ here with Elsie, man. Yeah. Yo, respect for doing this, homie. Thank you for having me. Cool.